Hello, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Faruk Taban. I'm the uh, president of Turkic American Alliance. So we are going to start pretty soon. Uh, our ambassador is here. And uh, this is our new uh, headquarters. We just opened on uh, uh, May 11th, a uh, while ago. And our ambassador was here to, uh, for the ribbon uh, cutting ceremony. So we're really honored. So um, I'm going to introduce uh, him here uh, shortly. Then uh, I'm going to go through the program a little bit. Then uh, after his talk, we have a Q&A session also. I hope you enjoy the uh, homemade Turkish food, I believe. And we have a, uh, also a rooftop uh, there. Okay, dear distinguished guests, welcome to the, our ambassadorial talk series. Uh, we are honored to have uh, His Excellency Ambassador of Turkey, uh, Mr. Namık Tan, with us. And also delighted to start uh, this series with the, uh, Mr. Ambassador here. And uh, as I said, I also would like to welcome you to our new uh, headquarters here. And uh, also Mr. Ambassador was here to honor us uh, at that time. Uh, that was our privilege to have him here. And uh, before inviting uh, the ambassador here, I'd like to go over his bio really uh, shortly because uh, he has a really long <laughs> uh, the, uh, credentials. Uh, ambassador uh, Mr. Namuk Tan was appointed uh, as ambassador of Turkey to the United States in February 2010. Prior to this appointment, Ambassador Tan was Deputy Undersecretary of Minister of Foreign Affairs responsible for bilateral political affairs and public diplomacy. He was previously ambassador of Turkey to Israel from 2007 to 2009. Ambassador Tan joined the Turkish Ministry of Foreign Affairs in 1982. After working in the Department of Maritime Affairs, he was posted to the Moscow as second secretary from 1984 to 1987. He then spent two years as first secretary in Abu Dhabi. After returning to Turkey, Mr. Tan served as the deputy chief of cabinet to the Turkish president till 1991. He was later assigned to the Turkish embassy in Washington, D.C., where he served as counselor from 1991 to 95, and first counselor from 97 to 2001. Between these assignments, Mr. Tan served as Chief of Cabinet to the Turkish Foreign Minister. Upon his return to Turkey in 2001, he first served as Head of the Department for the America and was subsequently named Head of the Information Department in 2002. He went on to serve as the spokesman for the Minister of Foreign Affairs from 2004 to 2007. Born in 86, Ambassador Tan holds a law degree from Ankara University. Ambassador Tan and Mrs. Fugan Tan have two children. Please uh, join me welcoming Mr. Ambassador Tan. Hello, everybody. <laughs> The worst thing about the CVs, uh, the dates, the years, when you hear about those dates, which belong to several years ago, then obviously your age is revealed. Yeah. Um, so I don't like it. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, dear guests, I'm delighted to be with you today. It is uh, a distinct pleasure to address this distinguished audience. This occasion is particularly 
important and mean meaningful to me. Having served almost 10 years in the U.S., 10 long years, I proudly observe increasing contributions of Turkish American community in all aspects of American life. The Turkic American Alliance is an impressive example <coughs> of the I institutionalized <coughs> presence Turkish American community has achieved in recent years. Let me also um, thank uh, my dear friend Faruk Taban, the president of the Turkic American Alliance, for inviting me to speak here. I joined the opening ceremony of this new headquarters of TAA last month, and I must underline that TAA and Faruk Taban have accomplished a lot in a very short time. Dear guests, ladies and gentlemen, today I will offer a perspective on the salient futures of current Turkish foreign policy. Recently, observers of Turkish foreign policy talk about Turkey's rising interest in its region and beyond. As a matter of fact, Turkey has never been disengaged from the East or its immediate neighborhood. What has changed and what gives the impression of Turkey's rising role is in fact the increase in Turkey's need and ability to influence the developments in and beyond its region. In other words, while some factors were on our involvement in peaceful resolution or prevention of conflicts, some others enable Turkey to further its soft power. There are a number of reasons for rise of Turkey's requisite and posture of influence, develop, uh, influence developments in its vicinity. First of all, when assessing Turkey's policies, one has to bear in mind that we live in one of the most turbulent areas of the world. Most of the potential and actual threats against the Western world's security emanate from Turkey's neighborhood. As such, whatever happens around us has a direct and usually immediate bearing on Turkey's political, economic, and social well-being. Our recent history is fraught with the adverse impacts of turbulence and instability in our region. That proximity has an enormous influence on our need to pursue policies or, uh, to ensure stability and peace in our region. We cannot remain as an idle bystander or uh, uh, as uh, those latent conflicts escalate into manifest ones. The most recent example is, of course, the developments in the Middle East. No doubt that the changes in the Arab world have raised high hopes across the globe. This is notably so in the Islamic world. However, they have also raised many valid questions regarding the future. Turkey's vision towards our region has been consistent for years. As early as 2003, Turkish President Abdullah Gül, in his former capacity as foreign minister, called on the leaders of organization of Islamic Conference member states in Tehran to put their houses in order as a matter of utmost priority. In that meeting, he stressed the importance of democratic principles, respect for fundamental rights and freedoms, 
the rule of law, good governance, transparency, and accountability. This is this vision envisages the strengthening of democratic rights and freedoms in the Middle East and beyond. It is not driven by self-interest or a desire to expand our domain of influence. Our main guiding principle has consistently been, been universal values. <clears throat> That's why, although the first tide of events in Tunisia and in Egypt caused many by surprise, Turkey did not hesitate to deliver a clear message at an earlier stage. We called upon the leaders of these countries to meet the demands of their people. Turkey's position regarding Libya has also been unambiguous. While we have upheld the independence, unity, and territorial integrity of Libya, we stress that the use of violence against civilians is unacceptable. Our leaders made clear calls to the Libyan leader to meet demands of, its, uh, of his people. Prime Minister Erdogan urged Colonel Gaddafi to leave and pave the way for a peaceful transition in, Li in Libya. Our message to Syrian government was no different. We stressed the need for equality, freedom, justice, and democracy, and that these are inalienable legitimate rights of for everyone. To postpone, delay, or worse, to ignore them are dead ends. It is one thing for a family member or a neighbor give a tough but necessary advice to someone. Turkey is a member of the family and most certainly a neighbor for Arabs. As we witness the turning of an important page in the history of Middle East, a heavy responsibility rests on our shoulders. And as a member of the family, we would do our utmost to live up to the challenge. Thus, Turkey, ladies and gentlemen, will never let tyranny to prevail over democracy and freedom. The second main factor that shapes our active involvement in our neighboring regions is the growing Turkish economy. Turkey is the 16th largest economy in the world and sixth largest in Europe. Turkish economy has expanded during the past seven years over 5% average growth rate. It has the highest economic growth rate among OECD countries. On a global, gl global co uh, uh, comparison, it is second only after China. Turkey attracted some 20 billion foreign direct investment on an annual average over the last 10 years. Turkey is the sole OECD member that did not have to intervene in the financial sector during the global economic downturn. Its credit rating increased by two points during the crisis. The economic dynamism adds to our soft power. At the same time, it has to be backed by foreign policy tools, ladies and gentlemen. New markets and new investments require more attention to the interests of our business community. In short, just like our American and European friends, now Turkey too has to support and protect its growing business interests through active diplomacy. The third future that enables Turkey to pursue a more active foreign policy is its unique ability to understand, empathize, and communicate with different worldviews. Turkey has always been defined as the bridge between the East and the West. I believe an accurate 
terminology about today's Turkey would not be a bridge between civilizations, but a center for awareness of difference. Turkey, with the ability to draw on different cultural and historical experiences of the East and the West, has capability to understand both worlds. As a secular democracy with a predominantly Muslim population, as a free market economy, as the only country that has a history in both Europe and Middle East, Turkey can and does reach out different identities in different worlds. I should make this point very clear. The question whether Turkey belongs to West, Western or Eastern civilization is not a meaningful one. In today's world, what is important is that Turkey has ability to communicate with different worldviews through its peculiar identity and competence. At the same time, the ability to understand languages of different worlds enables Turkey to make meaningful effort to resolve conflicts. This is how and why we were able to mediate between Israel and Syria. This is why Turkey can and does talk to every group in Lebanon in Bosnia, Herzegovina, in Kosovo, in Afghanistan, and in Iraq. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, with the fall of Berlin Wall, democracy and pluralism found their rightful place in global society. For the last two decades, medium of democracy is the only legitimate discourse in international relations. In recent years, Turkey's domestic reforms, supported by its EU accession process, have enabled to achieve higher levels of democracy for Turkish people. Obviously, this is a dynamic process, and there is always room for perfection. Thus. Turkey will continue to work to rise up to higher standards of democracy. In its foreign policy, strengthening of an indigenous democracy has increased the credibility of Turkey's messages. Thus, as the fourth factor speaking the language of democracy helps Turkey to reinforce its soft power in the international arena. Dear guests, dear friends, the combination of all these factors transpires in Turkey's eagerness and capability to achieve a zone of democracy, peace and stability in our region. Unfortunately, discussions on Turkey in the U.S. mostly overlook factors like, the, like these that drive our policies. Over the last 20 years, our world has undergone an immense transformation. Today, the perils before us are rare uh, of, uh, of us, um, before us are of a different and more complex nature. Therefore, we can no longer tackle the challenges as we have in the past. We need new tools and a revised approach. Many students of Turkey ask, is there a shift in Turkey's foreign policy orientation? What lies beneath the, this question is an attempt to reject the flow of history. Today's Turkey cannot be studied with yesterday's parameters. Today, the context, expectations, and the needs of global politics are different from yesterday. The meaning of security has been changing. 
Concepts of transparency and legitimacy are no more peculiar to domestic politics. The notion of interdependency gained a new connotation. Patron-client relationship is a relic of the past. As the global order changes, so does Turkey. Turkey's political stability, economic growth, democratization process, and the novel perspective about its history and geography enabled normalization of Turkey's foreign policy. Turkey is no more a passive recipient agent. It is a constructive actor. It is aware of its interests and responsibilities and capabilities. Turkey, therefore, pursues the historical context, its needs and capabilities. There is no shift in Turkey's foreign policy. There is normalization of Turkey's conceptualization of itself and its environment. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, I encourage you to take the long view in your studies of the Turkish foreign policy. I also encourage you to observe the larger flow of history, not a moment of it. Thank you so much. And I would be delighted to take uh, any questions that you might have. Well, if you don't want to ask questions, that's fine with me. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, thank you. I think this is the, the most popular uh, subject uh, in this town. Uh, I have been receiving so many questions uh, about our relationship with Israel. Actually, uh, as I, had, I, I mentioned in the, uh, in the ending parts of my speech, I think we, knew, uh, we need to look at the big picture. It's very important. Um, if you don't look at the big picture, you may not see um, the uh, probably the importance um, of the historical developments uh, in the recent past. Turks and Jews have uh, 519 years of history behind me. 519 years. 519 years. It's easy to say. And we, the Turks, have a clean, a very clean record behind us. There is no single moment in the history, except the last one, that we had given anything else but embrace, support, sanctuary to our Jewish friends. So that's why Turkey was next after the United States in recognizing Israel 63 years ago, right? That's why that was an uninterrupted relationship so far. That's why we've been, as I told you a while ago, mediating and finding solutions to Israel's problems with its neighbors. That's why we always defended Israel to leave as an independent state uh, within the internationally recognized borders. 
That's why we always voiced our support and everything. But Israel has a, made a mistake, a huge mistake. There is no explanation to this mistake, but apology. We want to move on and put this behind. But I think Israel is, should be the first to take steps in apologizing from what it has done uh, last year. And I know it's hard for them, but don't forget, only friends do apologize. Enemies do not from each other. Yes. Yes, please. in Iraq and your relationship, Turkey's relationship with the Kurds. Um, with the Kurds? Yeah. And is, is what we're doing in Iraq aggravating or helping your, what you were trying, what your democratization issues with regard to Kurds? I mean, I, I don't want to get off the Israeli point. I could go back there, but I, I'm, I'm curious about the civil rights, civil liberties, and civil protections, both from an Iraqi perspective and a Turkish perspective with regard to the Kurds. Um, is, is that something that is complicated at all? Um, your relations with the U.S. in terms of how we are intervening in Iraq right now, or what would you like to see happen? Uh, well, not at all. I mean, we have uh, no complication whatsoever, uh, as much as the, the Kurds, you know, uh, uh, are concerned. But if you talk about some terrorists then it is different. Um, however, whatever it be, our relations on this matter, on Iraq, and our cooperation is next to none with the United States. It is of utmost importance, and we are working very closely together. We have uh, been cooperating um, each and every moment, even as we speak, our ambassadors there in, 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 in Baghdad are not only close friends, but they, are, and they have a, an impeccable working relationship uh, on a daily basis. We exchange uh, information, we compare notes, uh, whatever you say. <clears throat> um, and it's not just uh, a, a sort of a, a, a relationship that, that would focus only on Kurds. Uh, per se, we have, as you know, it is uh, a very diverse society there. We have religious, uh, uh, different religious groups, different ethnic groups. It is uh, a mixture of everything. So it makes our job difficult, by the way. Uh, it's not easy. Uh, in that sense, the only requirement is, uh, I think, sometimes in the, in the, U in the U.S., um, our counterparts and in, in larger uh, audiences in different parts of this this country, sometimes they, they miss something very important. We are uh, we are a member of the civilized world, uh, uh, being a member to all international organizations. Some of the founding members and. We have an impeccable cooperation, but we are, uh, God bless you. We are, um, we are the only Muslim country which has parliamentary uh, democracy, we have secularism, and free market economy. So that's why. When we talk together, one voice, with the United States, on any issue, it makes a lot of difference. Um, we do it in Iraq. 
uh, the mission is not being completed yet. The challenge is there. But we are, I can tell you, we are satisfied with our relationship uh, on, on issues related to Iraq. It, it covers the, uh, the Kurds, I mean, if, if you want to say Kurds, says, but it covers other uh, uh, groups as well. It covers the Shiites, this and that. And Turkey is the only country on the face of the earth, I can challenge you, each and every one of you, who, which can speak to any group, be it religious or political, with any individual, with any leader. There is no such country, especially in our region, but globally, it is a fact. We do speak to everyone, everyone that you can think of. This is, uh, this is our culture. This is uh, a unique, uh, I think, uh, future of, of uh, the, the Turks. And it, this helps us. It helps us as much as it helps to our, of course, allies and friends when we are working together. Yes, please. Yes, Mr. Ambassador, thank you for addressing this today. Um, there's a lot of discussion and, and notions about an emerging Turkey. Yeah. And uh, you referenced in your speech, if I understood you correctly, that there's, there's not, uh, Turkey is not shifting, it's normalizing. Yeah. Um, would you describe the future of Turkey um, and its, um, the role of political Islam being playing more of a part in a normalized Turkey, or political Islam as opposed to just uh, you know, religious elements of Islam, um, play more of a, a, a normal role in Turkey's future? Well, I believe I, I, I have already answered your question in my speech because I said uh, uh, in, in one paragraph, I, I don't remember now when. We have uh, no political, no uh, any other intention when we talk the real aspects of Turkish foreign policy, which means um, um, I understand it, it's, uh, it's perceived differently here. There is a big perception gap here in this town, in this country as well. Uh, when it comes to Turkey, because Turkey has made a huge step, huge, uh, uh, I think, development, uh, and unprecedented type of uh, dynamism has been, uh, I think, uh, performed by our society, by our uh, businesses, by everybody. So, as I said, in, 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 in our immediate neighborhood, um, in order for us to do some more good things, we need a peaceful environment. Then we just face those individual problems. I tell everybody, look, let's go clockwise of count or count counterclockwise, whichever way you like. Just, just if we identify some of the problems, like I mean, Afghanistan, for instance. How can we be out of Afghanistan when we, I mean, when any one of you look at uh, 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 the past and see our involvement in building that society and building a very, very important uh, trust there and the people. When our forces, our troops are on the streets of uh, uh, Kabul, they are the only group who can just uh, do it safely, without any threat, without any, um, let's say, uh, uh, physical uh, the type of uh, action from, from anybody. Our PRTs, for instance, American uh, uh, Provincial uh, uh, Reconstruction Teams, uh, we have two, and one of them is right next to the American uh, PRT. Um, and that 
every day the American PR is under attack. Some sort of a minor or you know major. They don't feel safe, but we, our PRT is there, and we have received no single threat from anybody. We do go to every corner of Afghanistan. We do run 26 uh, uh, girls schools. We do run 16 hospitals. We do a lot of civic work. We do train uh, the Afghan forces. 5,000. We do, do uh, the same number of uh, uh, training for the security forces as well, the police forces. So, so we have to be involved in this. Then comes to, uh, when it comes to Pakistan, Pakistan is our traditional long-time friend. We do have every ability to just work with any uh, of our allies to communicate messages because if, if we want effectively uh, uh, to get some results from our messages, it should come from a trusted party. So we are one of the trusted parties. We have to be there. We know the people. And it comes to Iran. Iran, we have a sweet, generous type of relationship with Iran. Thousands of years we're living in the same neighborhood. So how can we just uh, turn our uh, back to Iran? We have to be engaged. In Iraq, the same. Syria, the same. We have families. We have 950 kilometer border. Can you imagine? 950. How can we say, well, what's going on in, in Syria should go on and uh, we don't have any, uh, any interest in it? We cannot. In Caucasus, in the Balkans, we have more Albanians living in, Alba in Turkey than the Albanians living in Albania. Did you know that? We have no Ab uh, more Abhazians living in Turkey than the Abhazians living in Abhazia, in Georgia. Probably we have equal number of Azeris living in our country than the, uh, uh, the Azeris living in Az Azerbaijan. We have 26 different eth ethnic groups. We have affiliations, historical, uh, 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 you know, commercial, family-wise, human-to-human contacts are very... Now, you may have very valid, one valid question that I wanted to, to address here also. I, I think, uh, or I, I did. So, why or where were you before? Look, this soft power is comprised of several different things. I mean, if you if you have a stability, first of all, you have to have a stable, uh, a powerful administration in the country. This is the first, uh, I think, important, very important factor. The second one, economy. Economy is of utmost importance. That we have now, we have an economic power. We have, uh, we have had 5% uh, average uh, growth rate in the last uh, decade, which is next after China. Last year, we had 8.9% economic growth. Again, it's right next after China. The only country, uh, that once sick man of Europe, has become the healthiest man of Europe. Look at Europe. You know, with all due respect to all, all of our friends in Europe. But we are powerful. So that's why we want to make our, uh, our uh, neighborhood a peaceful one. We want to help. We want to engage with people. We don't want any more troubles in our region. We want to be proactive to uh, extinguish the fire before it, uh, I mean, when we see it, it's going to pop up. We have to stop it. Why? 
because we want to trade, we, we want some, some other things to do. We want uh, 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 bigger trade, bigger engagement, uh, innovation, entrepreneurship, such things to, uh, to, to develop in, in this region. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, let me just underline one once again, very boldly. Turkey is no longer a client state. Turkey will have and has to, I mean, the present conjuncture, the developments and everything um, just imposes that mission over Turkey. It is a good thing for our uh, all our friends, all our allies. It's good for the United States. What we have been doing there is good for for uh, for our neighbors. Of course, it's good for us as well. Uh, but you should you should not see this. I know too many see this and perceive this as such. It's not a hubris. It's not something that we just uh, do it for uh, uh, for just uh, how should I say? Uh, it, it's not easy to qualify, but uh, it's not something for some desired purpose. It's the, for the good of our people, good of uh, our region, for peace and stability. This is, uh, this is what it is. Ah, and one last thing. Again, the ultimate objective, for, I mean, in what we are doing, there is an objective. It is the same objective as what U.S. has, as what our allies in the Europe has, as what all our friends has. The same object. We may have different methodologies, different you know, ways of reaching that objective, but this is the values. The values. We have, well, uh, these are the things that we want to upheld in our country. Yes. Yes, please. My name is Alton Alonso. I'm a professor in the LCA students. I have a question concerning the Syrian crisis. Yes. And of course, this is a very dynamic situation. It changes uh, from day to day. But I was wondering, in terms of the refugee crisis, has Turkey made any indication as far as how many refugees it will be able to accept and for how long? And also, do you feel is there some kind of tipping point where if the refugee crisis becomes uh, too too much out of hand, that Turkey would have to uh, go beyond just the rhetorical means of uh, dealing with Syria and perhaps try using some other means to help resolve the, the issue concerning the refugees? Thank you. I think this whole question is uh, uh, just the refugee thing is, is one little part of it. Um, we need to be very realistic, ladies and gentlemen. I think, as I try to underline everywhere on different uh, occasions, we haven't seen nothing yet. I'm not talking about only Syria, the larger picture. This is just the beginning, unfortunately. We've got a lot of things to do. We have got um, I mean, we, we, we don't have any enough tools uh, in our hands. We have no quick fixes, no shortcuts, no magical formulas. This refugee crisis, as you name it, this is just a very, very little drop of the huge, in the huge, uh, let's say, uh, ocean. Um, some other things have come before. The thing is, as I told you, um, we want everything, of course, to be done through peaceful means. We want the peaceful demonstrations of 
the, 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 the people of those countries uh, to be responded peacefully in every civilized country, as in every civilized country. Um, we want, of course, uh, we don't want to uh, impose on anybody anything from outside. I mean, it should not be perceived as some sort of a, um, uh, a, a, a just for the people of that country, specific country, uh, something which is alien to their whole thing. They should do it. They should own it. So in order to manage this whole thing, you need engagement. Engagement meaning with every group in that. In that. Thanks God, we have that ability. We can talk to everyone. Again, be it the administration or opposition. So we try hard to, to make the, uh, the road, uh, the, the, the direction, the right direction uh, uh, to them. Um, and we, one other requirement, which is of uh, utmost importance, as I told you before, is that we have to speak one voice. Um, if everyone talks different lines, then the messages will be, I think, will not resonate well there, will not be received effectively. Uh, that's why we are cooperating and coordinating our efforts with the United States. And I can tell you very effectively, we're working, and we're very satisfied, we're very closely working. We should not rush to judgment. No matter how much we're, uh, you know, pushed, we should be very calm and very careful. Because we may take a step that would make us very sorry later on. We have to be very careful. Um, it will take some time, uh, but I think, as I said, this is a challenge. This is a challenge, and we will, we have to work together. That's what we are doing. Any other questions? Okay. Look, I, I tell everybody, you know, I was, uh, it's, as he said, you know, I was the spokesperson of the foreign minister, and I tell this, you know, someone should talk me. I like talking. <laughs> so. All right. Hassan okay. Azar, Turkey, uh, Mr. Ambassador, could you give uh, us some more information about recent calls between President Obama and Prime Minister Erdogan, also some calls? Uh, um, Secretary Clinton, uh, Mr. Dodo, I'm uh, asking this question uh, for to understand the United States and Turkey listen enough to each other or understand each other well. Uh, I cannot obviously give you any information about the contents of those talks, but phone conversations. But I think we have had uh, how many uh, uh, in, in the last, I think, two months, maybe eight or nine phone conversations among our prime minister and uh, between our prime minister and uh, President Obama, and maybe two times more. Uh, talk over the phone with our foreign minister and Secretary Clinton. Um, I think that gives a clear picture uh, of uh, what uh, the nature in, uh, of our uh, co coordination and cooperation in that regard. How can you say, how can you uh, imagine, uh, or is there any other uh, leader that Obama made 
that number of phone conversations or phone calls? There is none. The same is true. I, I, I was joking to, uh, to my uh, foreign minister uh, lately when I was in Turkey. I said, sir, you've seen and met with, uh, or vice versa, I think in the other way around. I said, I see you less than Hillary Clinton. You're my foreign minister, but he, she sees you more than I do. Believe me, this is the case. I mean, Hillary Clinton sees and talks or meets with our foreign minister, say, five or six times in one month within the margins of different meetings or phone calls or, you know, uh, they, they just uh, run each other. I don't see him that often. So we're working very closely. We're really uh, proud of this, this, this cooperation. I think um, it, is, uh, it is important. We think it is important. We attach a lot of importance uh, because this coordination and cooperation is, is uh, required and it's a must. And I believe uh, it will continue. It will continue. And uh, that's why I think um, it's necessary uh, also not only for Syria, but uh, for any other issue, Libya and uh, others, uh, to coordinate. And that's why, that's why, as early as uh, uh, I think uh, uh, the mid of uh, July, we will have a contact group meeting in Turkey. So, ladies and gentlemen, and no matter uh, what you do, you will be seeing Turkey every day, either on the TV or on the news wires or on the newspapers or somewhere on some occasion, you'll see, you'll see our good face. You should know we are your friends. We are a close ally, a friend of the United States. And thank you. I would like to present a small gift. Uh, I would like to present a small gift to our ambassador for his time and commemorate this event. Uh, Thank <laughs> you.